Are you following closely the development of the Blender Beam add-on? If so, then strap your seatbelt because in this video I will cover the latest release of this add-on. And I am talking about the version 0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
more in depth about this stuff right here. So if you are interested about this, stay tuned because many videos about Blender Beam are coming out in the next near future. Enough docs are written to give users a guide of how to explore models. The docs are still horrendously incomplete, but at least this sets a standard of documentation expected as a structure for how to present it. Developers can access the new documentation here. Here is for developers. All right. The next important matter is support for distribution ports. For MEP modeling, all distribution elements like ducts, pipes, equipment have connection ports to allow them to connect with a distribution system chilled water, supply air, etc. Many IFC viewers do not show these distribution ports, which is a shame because they are critical to ensuring the correct connectivity and topology of a distribution system. New features involve showing ports, hiding ports, and basic port editing. You can now move, copy, and add new ports or delete existing ports. You can change the location of ports and attributes of a port. You can also connect, disconnect, or set the flow direction of ports. Of course, editing port by itself is not enough to complete MEP modeling, but it is a critical step in the right direction. Very minimal features have been implemented to do with automatically drawing ductwork from parametric widths and heats, but it's still too early to be productive with. The next one, quite important, I would add, construction sequencing improvements. You can now export schedules to Microsoft Project. Importing from Microsoft Project is also improved with a number of critical bugs that broke importing, including calendar and duration calculation fixed. A number of critical import bugs were also fixed for P6, I think it's Primavera, XML versions lesser than 8.1. For those using IFC to XML conversions with IFC convert schedule task and calendar data is now also converted thanks to Cristian Martinez de la Rosa. Date calculations have been improved, handling cases where tasks are edited without enough date information, infinite loops in invalid calendars, recursive calendar removal, or editing start times with no finish. Date calculations now follow working days and handle a 9 to 5 p.m. day as one day duration instead of calculating from midnight. Gantt chart presentation is also now much better, showing ISO durations and task captions on the chart bars. The next one, it's about support for rendering styles and textures. The Blender Beam add-on now supports rendering styles and certain types of textures. The colors you see in a beam model are typically the on-screen basic shading colors. However, IFC also stores rendering materials, rendering colors and textures. These materials, for example, lighting modes or rendering modes are actually compatible with GIF and X3D. This means that modern physically based materials are supported. Textures like diffuse, normal, metallic, emissive are also supported. With better support for rendering that gives Beam Author more control over basic model presentation and with support for texturing, this can be used instead of previous hacks where textures were represented as unnecessary geometry, especially for models which tessellate text, signage, symbols, or things like grills and grates. New material and style manager. Yes, I like this. It looks a bit different and it looks a bit more modern. So yeah, that's good. A critical part of managing B model is seeing the materials and styles used. The new material and style manager lets you see a list of this. Filter by material or style, delete, add and see where it is used. Hopefully, this will lead to improved data quality in BIP models, where materials can be better managed and audited, and then linked to lifecycle analysis. Styles are also more than colors. The new style manager exposes styles like fill area style, curve styles, and textiles. Managing these styles are critical for drawing support. Improved document manager. The UX or user User experience for managing document and document references have now been improved. Attach and associate documents such as drawings, schedules, and specifications with objects and add documents or superseded documents support for relative paths make it easier to transport associated external documents with IFC models. New support for actors. Yes, this is a really cool one. BIM isn't just about geometry, and that's right, or properties, or tasks, resources, cost items, materials, analytical models, and so on. BIM it's also about actors, about us, who is involved in the process. Actors are people and organizations, including liable engineers and architects, clients and operators, occupants and lessees, manufacturers, warranty providers and suppliers. These critical relationships between objects and actors can now be managed. People, organizations and people within organizations can be designated actor roles and associated with objects. And the UX has been refreshed based on this use case. This has large implications for facility management. 
so much more. A few critical bugs were fixed for coordinate offsets in projects using map coordinates. The selector utility now has support for chaining and not filters, basic usability tweaks here and there, such as the save and save as distinction when saving projects. File browsing for URI, maybe it's URL here, I'm not really sure. URI, I don't know what that is. Properties, a number of bug fixes related to IFC 2x3 authoring and increased geometry stability when importing. The test, the test suites have now also passed the 1500 test milestone to guarantee the ongoing stability of the add-on. A huge thanks to the growing volume of new contributors who are joining the team and changing the industry. You can too. All changes can be seen here, opening this link. Credits for this release in order of commits via Git. This is really impressive. I'm really grateful to you guys and gals everyone who contributed to this project. As always, Dion, kudos to you again. You are doing a tremendous job and I really appreciate your efforts. And the same goes for all the other contributors. Thank you very much for your contribution. You are trying to change an industry. You are trying to provide solutions. You are trying to help us break free from proprietary solutions that are not meeting our demands and our needs because they are thinking only about the money. And the work you are doing it's crucial and it is going to change an entire industry. Again, thank you very much for all your efforts. Now, before I go, as I said, follow closely my channel because soon I will make more videos about Blender Beam. Stay tuned and until the next time, have a good one.